Hello everyone, we are back. This time we are going to talk about slow flight. Making landings at slow speed allows you to come into places that are otherwise impossible to land. This is experimental Cessna 170B with slats and VGs, also VGs on the flap. This next one is a 170B with 180 horsepower, Sportsman stall kit and VGs. Approach speeds to this kind of landing is about 40 miles an hour. That's ground speed. The airspeed indicator is already showing like 10 or something like that. Now we're going to see a landing in the carbon cut. This airplane is the best performer bush airplane ever flown. It lands very slow and takes off in very short distance. This day I was test flying this airplane and this was my very first landing so it was not super slow. The titanium gear and the shock absorbers made by Alaska Bush Wheels do their work when landing on the rocks. It feels very smooth. So first I'm just giving some examples of slow and short landings. There's some backcountry strips that they only have one way in, one way out. This is Johnson Creek in Idaho. You can land from the other side but there's a house and the rules are it's better not to do it. So here lots of the landings are with a tailwind. So you have to manage your speed. Short rust strip and there is no go around. You must land very slow and hit the spot. So slow flight will give you the feel for the airplane and allows you to do better landings, shorter landings and not floating on the runway. This kind of landing, there is no floating allowed and it's very unforgiving if you come too fast. Absolutely no go around on this earth trip. This is a Cessna 206 in Stehiken, Washington. He does a great job of holding the airplane and do a smooth landing. No floating and plenty of runway left. So no need to come super slow, as you can see, and the idea is not to float, to have excess energy. This is Sirene Station in Corcovado National Park. The only way to come to this airstrip is to come slow over the trees, very rough strip and short. As you can see here, part of the challenge is to find the airstrip. It's very difficult to locate. It is dense jump. Here I'm doing slow flight, locating the airstrip. Then we'll slow down even more for the landing. Found the airstrip, full flaps, slow down. There are big trees, so at the end you have to steep approach into a very rough short land. You can see uh, I add some power to try to make a smooth landing because it is a really rough earth trip. In this case I use low flight since I was lo looking for the earth trip. Again slow flight and a tight turn 
to a gravel bar. It's a challenging one because it's a tight turn at slow speed, so you have to watch your angle of attack and slow flight. This is a great exercise I like to practice. A slow flight on feet of the ground, so you also get to feel the ground effect. You look for a long runway when it's not a busy day, and you can fly the whole length of the runway. It will give you a great feel for the airplane at very slow speeds. I think this is the minimum speed the airplane will fly. A slow flight is the region of flight below the maximum lift of drag ratio, where induced drag becomes more significant than parasite drag. A slow flight can be as slow as 3 to 5 knots above the stall speed. A, so a slow flight is sometimes referred as to the region of reverse command or on the back side of the power curve. This is because in slow flight more power is required to maintain a straight and level flight at lower air speeds. So if you approach in slow flight you can land really short and really slow. Very important during slow flight is to keep the ball center. Pick up the wing not only with the ailerons but also with rudder. It's a good idea to practice with no flaps, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, or 40 if the airplane has 40 degrees of flaps. So you get used to the feeling of the airplane at very slow speeds. Also, it is a good idea to practice stalls and learn to recognize when the stall is coming. This is my friend Jockhead in his system at 70, following me on my takeoff. He's coming really slow and follows me no problem on my takeoff, making a sharp left turn. Mastering a slow flight allows you to do this kind of flying safely. Here is a young jockey in this session 170. He's joining me on a landing, a very slow flight. Slow approaches after you get used to slow flights can also allow you to do very smooth landings, just adding a little bit of power at the end. So when you practice slow flight, no matter what airplane you fly, 
you are getting a feel for the airplane and you are mastering how to control the airplane in every situation no matter if a Warbird like this one or a Cessna 182 or a Piper Cherokee whichever airplane you fly is good to practice a slow flight in this case in the CJ6 I like to practice slow flight with the knee gear and the flaps retracted and also with the gear and the flaps down it makes a difference in this kind of work. hope you guys enjoyed this video and please support Backcountry 182 with Patreon